Whether it be by the will of God, unexpected carnal pairings, or the intervention of mad scientists, sometimes unexpected animals breed. And all new beasts are brought unto the world, and some of them are horrifying. These are 20 hybrid animals you should fear the most. Number 20. The Wolfen now, I do want to clarify something to begin this list. Not all of these animals are honestly ones that you should fear. It's not as though hybrid animals have a desire to go and hurt somebody. It's more of a case where you don't know what some of these creatures are, and it's better to be safe than sorry. For example, imagine you're out on the waters of your area, and all of a sudden you see something that looks like the fusion between a whale and a dolphin. How do you think you'd react to that? A fair answer would be for you to point at the creature and go, what's a wolfen? Because yes, that's exactly what it is, or at least what it technically is. Its real name is one of those really scientific names that I'm not even going to pretend that I can pronounce correctly, and so people just prefer to say wolfen instead because it's easier to roll off the tongue. Even I hate saying those scientific names, and that's why they're rarely, if ever, in the videos. Just saying, you know, scientists. Anyhow, the first wolfen was spotted near Hawaii, and people honestly did not understand what they were seeing, so that's when the scientists went to work of figuring out what exactly was going on. They were able to trace this creature back to a rough-toothed dolphin father and a melon-headed whale mother, which sounds like a great band name. It takes after its mother with its tubular body and its father with its fins, so it should be noted that not every whale can mate with any dolphin, that would be impossible in a various amount of ways, and thus this fusion is even more rare and unexpected. That's the other thing, because of how rare it is, nobody's honestly sure how many are actually out there. What we do know though is that one in Hawaii was not the first, as there's actually one that's been born in SeaWorld, but whether it's the last or there's more out there, nobody can honestly say. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. After circulating on the internet for a while and being thought to be fake, the photo on the right is now believed by many scientists to actually be genuine. As you can see, it seems to show a hybrid of a rhino and a zebra. Scientists have said that this would make sense, as the two species are not as distantly related as you might think. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag Sweet Topic. Number 19. Swoos. I'm pretty sure you can guess what this next bird hybrid is. Exactly. It's a mixture of a swan and a goose, and thus the swoos is born. These names are going to be the death of me in this video, I swear. Not unlike the last entry, this hybrid was not born in a natural nature kind of way, if you will, but within a national trust property. And it gets even more interesting than that because the story behind this hybrid creature is almost one of a love story. You see, the attendants at West Greenhouse know noted that a female swan was having a hard time finding a mate, and then all of a sudden, a male goose comes onto the scene. They mated, and then the swoos was born. Isn't love grand? Mary Hamilton, the marketing manager at West Greenhouse, would say that both parents were proud and happy, and that they were doing all they could to cherish their little aquatic offspring. Now, this actually raises a very important question about birds crossbreeding, because as you may know, more than certain other species, the early days of birds are incredible important, to the extent that the parents often have to watch over them for quite some time. And thus, the question becomes, why do they risk having defective children by breeding outside of their species? The answer is that sometimes it's by accident. The calls made by certain species of bird are so similar to each other that they think that they're actually one of their own, even when they're not. The other way that it occurs, which might have happened here, is that when faced with few breeding options, sometimes another species is the only action that's left. Again, love is grand, isn't it? Number 18. The Dezo. Now, unlike the last two entries, I bet you can't really guess what a Dezo is. And that's because, yes, it is its real name. And unless you're in the know, you really won't be able to guess it. Have you said your guesses? Well, you're wrong because the Dezo is a hybrid between a yak 
and domesticated cattle. How that ends up being the Dezo when none of them have a Z in their names, well, the world may never know, but it should be noted that the word Dezo technically refers to a male hybrid, while the female is known as Dezomo or even Zome. How they end up with those names. Now, you should know that another variation of the name in the English language is Yaddle, and that makes so much more sense. But all names aside, there is a bit of a catch when it comes to these creatures, mainly that while the females are fertile, the men of the species are actually sterile, and that makes it a little bit more harder to grow them as a species, as you would expect. As a product of the hybrid genetic phenomenon of hybrid vigor, there are larger and stronger species than a yak or a cattle from the regions they usually originate in. In Mongolia and Tibet, they're thought to be more productive than cattle or yaks in terms of both milk and meat production. And that there is the reason behind things like the Dezo. They might not be able to be groomed into a species, but they can do better than the sum of their parts, and as a result, they end up being exploited. A sad reality when it comes to the business business side of farming and cattle raising in general. Number 17. Cockapoo. Do I really need to say it? Really? Who in the world thought that cockapoo was a good name for anything? Did they do that as a joke? Did they want the species to be mercilessly made fun of? Nobody knows, but jeez, is it a dumb name for a dog. And as you may have guessed, or even thought, that it was for someone else? No, it was indeed for a hybrid dog species. And it should be noted that dogs and cats are a species that do have hybrids occur all the time. Mainly because the fusion of certain species actually allows for a certain mixture of qualities that can make the hybrid better than the sum of their parts and thus more desirable to those who want a certain kind of dog. In this case, breeders have combined the Cocker Spaniel and the Poodle breed in order to make a completely people-oriented hybrid who's intelligent enough to train easily, heartily sheds, and forgives quickly. And it's also so affectionate that you're never going to feel alone. Which, to be honest, sounds like a really great dog species as a whole. And when you look at the stats behind this dog, the appeal arguably grows even more. It's good around all people, doesn't really howl or bark a whole lot, and is only 15 inches in height at its max, with about 19 pounds at the most, and they don't need a whole lot of grooming. Plus, objectively, the dog is quite cute to look at, and that's half the battle right there with dog owners. So, while the name may be horrible, the dog most definitely is not. Number 16. The Beefalo. Now I've already shown you one dark side of cattle raising, and I'll show you another. This is the beefalo, and in many ways it's the pinnacle of greed when it comes to creating a hybrid animal for the purposes of profit alone. Farmers will mix a domesticated bull with a female American bison in order to make the beefalo, and once they're breeding in their adult forms, beefalo are able to then make their own offspring, and that's something that doesn't always happen naturally with newly bred creatures as you've seen with the Dezo. This means that they can be a more viable species and fulfill their purpose even more. So what would that purpose be? Well, the main highlight of the beefalo is that they're able to produce much more beef overall than regular cattle, not to mention they have the genes within them to make better meat. They produce more lean and flavorful meat like bison, but are more docile and easier to raise like domestic cattle. So if you want to boil it down to a simple statement, these beefalo are being bred just so that they can be slaughtered for their better meat. That's not very appetizing when you hear it that way. You all do know, of course, about the animal cruelty that many times happens on farms that raise animals to be killed, like cows and chickens and pigs, but this is taking things to a whole new level. This is using science and genetics to make a new species just so that they can be murdered and then eaten. Again, not very appetizing, but humanity has shown that they'll go to great lengths in order to protect their own interests and make the most profit possible. So the logic behind the beefalo should actually not be too surprising at all. Number 15. The Kama. We'll go to a more natural hybrid now, and one that's not exactly exploited in the slightest, I hope. The Kama is a very special animal because it's an odd fusion between a camel and a llama. Now, not unlike other hybrids on this list, this is a rather odd union, not the least of which is because this isn't a pairing that you'd believe would happen just because of where they tend to live. Camels are known for being desert creatures, living in regions where there's a whole lot of heat and sand and stuff, and llamas, well, 
help, they live up high in the mountains without any issues. One stores water in its hump, and the other has thick wool fur that can protect them from extreme cold. It's not a combination that would usually yield a child, and yet apparently it did. The first comma would be introduced into the world in 1995, but she was the only one that survived, for the record. It would take another 13 years and, quote, better breeding techniques for the next three commas to be born. So, as of 2008, there were only four of these creatures on the entire planet. Even the team that was behind the animal admitted that it was difficult to breed, which honestly makes us all wonder why they're trying so hard to try and make this breed a thing. Because if it's that hard to make a baby with them and then keep it alive, isn't that a hint that you really shouldn't be doing it at all? Number 14. Tigan. The key thing about hybrids that must be noted is that who in the relationship is a male and who is a female becomes very vital in terms of what's actually going to be born. The case in point, a tiger and a lion two species that are known to make hybrid babies at times, but which one is made depends on the genders of the parents. If it's a male tiger that's mating with a female lion, then what you get is the tigan. And as you can see, the tigan very much looks like a mixture between a tiger and a lion, which includes also having a mixture of spots and stripes, depending on which one that you're looking at. Now, if you're thinking, is there a real difference between the tigan and the other hybrid fusion? Well, the answer would be yes. Because of the genes of the mother, who in this case is the lion, the tigan does not grow as large as other fusion animals do. But why? Well, that's because the lioness has a growth inhibitory gene that regulates how big they can actually get. And this is where the more sad part of the fusion comes in. Since it's not a naturally created race, many of these tigans have genetic disorders and then die at abnormally young ages. To the best of everyone's knowledge, only one has been bred naturally in the wild, and that was in India. Every other case of the tigan has been done in captivity like zoos and nature reserves. So this may just be nature's way of saying, you know, maybe you shouldn't mix. Listen to nature. Number 13. The Liger. Now, I was teasing heavily before, and I'll dive right into this one. The liger is what happens when you mix a male lion with a female tiger, and then you already know what happens when the reverse occurs. The result of that fusion is a very massive beast that's honestly bigger than both of its parents by a wide margin. The hybrid embodies the more than the sum of its parts line to a T. To give you some context, the average liger is just a measly 12 feet long, and they're also very heavy, but it doesn't stop them from running over 30 miles per hour on the ground. So what you have here is a big, strong, and fast cat that everyone's going to want as a pet. I've already got a name picked out for mine when I get one. The catch, though, is that there are only a handful of these ligers out there in the world, because like with the Tigan, they can happen naturally, but tend not to. In fact, they're usually born on accident or because humans wanted one to show off at a zoo. At one zoo, there is the Liger Hercules, and this particular Liger is the biggest of the bunch and is a world record holder. This is easily one of the most famous hybrids out there in the world, and looking at one, it's not hard to see why. Number 12. Leopun. Now, if you thought I was done with big cat fusions, well, you'd be wrong. What's more, I'm not even done with the lion fusions. Because this time around, I'm talking about one that goes between a lion and a leopard. Behold, the mighty Leopin. Not the worst name, but when you compare it to the Liger, it just doesn't stand up to the scrutiny. As the name would suggest, though, this is indeed a fusion between a male leopard and a female lion. Many leopard-lion hybrids have been bred in captivity. Best known are those that were born at Koshin Hanshin Park in Japan in the late 50s and early 60s, one of which actually survived more than 20 years. That's pretty significant for one key reason, as typically the life expectancy of a leopard and a lion hovers around 13 years, and the outlier is one that lasted 23, and that puts that one right up with them.
One of the other interesting facts about this species is that unlike lions, they're actually good climbers. They also enjoy water, which often distresses their lioness mothers. Even cat moms worry about their young. It's pretty adorable, really. As for their looks, they very much have a mixture of their leopard and lion parents. They can be as big as lions, but have the spots of leopards. And though curious, their legs are not as big as the rest of their body. As I've noted before, the Leopins have been mostly made in captivity, though some would swear that these could happen in the world at large, and some accounts of the lionesses allowing the male leopards to mate with them have been stated. Number 11. Groller Bear Bears are one of the many creatures that you wouldn't expect to associate with something in making hybrids because they just don't tend to mix all together. Except it does happen, and this time it's between two of their most well-known species. The Growler is a mixture of a polar bear and a grizzly bear, and to be clear, this isn't the only hybrid of these bears out there, but it's one that does get a lot of attention due to how unique it is. The truly interesting thing, though, is that this creature is one that honestly should shouldn't happen too often. Unlike other hybrids, this is not the matter of fertility or even difficulty breeding. Rather, it's a matter of two very different bears coming together to mate. As you likely know, grizzly bears are more land-based in terms of being in forests, while the polar bear prefers the cold and snow of the Arctic regions. So it would be a very rare thing for these two to meet, right? Well, not exactly. There have been many documented cases of natural-born growler bears in the world, and as you look at it, it's not only a very unique kind of bear, but it's one where both sides of its lineage clearly shine through in terms terms of its fur and coloring. But there's another element to this. You see, there are some scientists who actually believe that the growlers are the future of Arctic animals. Because of global warming, the Arctic is getting warmer and thus polar bears are suffering, but with grizzly genes within them, they could potentially be better adapted for what's coming. As of now, scientists are currently studying them more, but finding the growlers have proven to be difficult and thus precious data has not been unearthed about them thus far. Number 10. The Jaglion now look, I'm not saying that female lions get around, but the Jaglion is a mixture between a male jaguar and a lioness. And this is definitely a creature that doesn't happen naturally in the world. Because jaguars, well, they don't live in Africa. They usually reside in Central and South America, and sometimes in the United States. And of course, lions live in Africa outside of captivity. So by all logic, they shouldn't mix or even mate, but they've been able to thanks to forced breeding and the fact that their genetic makeup is actually rather similar to one another due to a part of the same genus. Now, if you look visually at this creature, you'll notice that it looks much different than its parents, to the extent that its fur is much darker and the spots that it has aren't even close to those of its father. This is just how their genes work when they pass them on to a child. Genetics is still something that mystifies people at times. Number 9. Schnoodle Schnoodles are a cross between schnauzers and poodles. They can either be a first-generation mix from two perturbed parents, and it should be noted that they can come in a variety of sizes, and due to their workhorse parents, they're quite capable themselves. Schnoodles can have a wide variety of color combinations due to how their parents can have a variety of fur colors, and those options then pass down to the offspring. Because of their working dog pedigree, schnoodles will need a considerable amount of exercise and training, and many owners actually struggle with the energy level of their schnoodle. So you can't say you haven't been warned if you want to get one for yourself. Number 8. Geep. Can you see me shaking my head at this name? Or even my pet guinea pig Twinkle? Twinkle, stop shaking your head. Because I totally am, and I get it, many people think that the best hybrid names are ones that pay tribute to both parents, but can we at least try to make them sound cool? I mean, it's a new species after all. In Ireland, a farmer found that a goat had decided to get it on with one of his sheep. He admitted that he had no idea it was happening until the geep was born. He had never seen anything like them before and added that his family had been involved in sheep farming for generations. It also needs to be noted that the geep was not only healthy after being born, 
But you could very easily see the effects that the mixed genes were having on it. For example, it was born at the same time as other lambs, but the geep is much faster than them. As a whole, it is very rare, and they do usually die young, so to have one grow up was a unique thing that the farmer got to experience. Number 7. Savannah Cat now, I talked about it before, but cats are a species that have been bred in various ways in order to create new versions of the cat as a whole, which at times can make them very valuable. One such example is the legendary Savannah Cat. It's a species that's made via breeding a domesticated cat with a wild serval, though other cats have been used in the past as well. Thus, it makes it a truly hybrid cat and one that's become quite popular in certain circles of exotic pet owners. These cats are big and can be up to 25 pounds, depending on what generation of cat that you get. Furthermore, the reason they're exotic is because they look like cats from Africa, which includes having longer legs and a spotted fur coat, hence the Savannah Cat title. In fact, they're so desirable that Justin Bieber actually spent $35,000 to get one, and others have paid similar stupid prices for them as well. Number 6. Pomsky Dog The Pomsky Dog is a cross between a Siberian Husky and a Pomeranian, a dog combination that you really wouldn't think about if I wasn't discussing it right now. One of a number of designer dogs, the Pomsky is a breed that's gaining in popularity thanks primarily to their photogenic appearance and prevalence on social media. Because as we all know, dogs are totally influencers on social media. The irony of this particular fusion is that you don't know how the dog is going to look until they're born, as they can take after either parent in a variety of ways. Number 5. Zubron Finally, a fusion name that honestly inspires the imagination. Learn from the mighty Zubron. Now, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to guess this one, so I'll tell you that the Zubron is a mixture between a cow and a European bison. What? You didn't guess it? The name Zubron was officially chosen from hundreds of proposals that were sent to the Polish Weekly magazine during a contest that was organized in 1969, which is a great idea. Get the people involved in naming the animals. Brilliant, because, you know, Zubron? That totally is a mixture between a cow and a bison. Gosh. Somewhat tragically, while the Zubron were at first a marvel of hybrids because of how they were stronger and less susceptible to disease than their their parents, they would eventually be discontinued by the late 1980s, and there were various reasons why. But one of the officially given reasons was that the Zubron might crossbreed and pollute the gene pool. <laughs> Thankfully, people are still trying to develop this species, so all hope isn't quite gone yet. Number 4. Moulard Oh look, another bird fusion. The Moulard is a hybrid between two different species of domestic duck, the domestic Muscovy duck and the domestic duck derived from the wild mallard. American Pekins and other domesticated ducks are most commonly used to breed these things due to the high meat production that they give, and it is another one of those hybrids. Not unlike a previous one, the male of the species are known to be sterile, which has given them the not so flattering nickname of mule old ducks. Oh, how kind. While it is possible to produce moulards naturally, artificial insemination is used more than often with greater success, which arguably makes the whole thing even worse because they're being bred for meat, and to get them to be born at all, they have to be artificially born. This is why many people are against such methods. Number 3. Narluga now, this name gets a pass as the Narluga does sound kind of cool, and as you might have guessed, it's a mixture between narwhals and beluga whales, which is definitely a choice. It should also be noted that the narwhal itself is its own kind of hybrid based on how they're a fusion of looks from various aquatic creatures, but this one takes the cake. In this case, it was a beluga father and a narwhal mother that made the hybrid, and they were found because of Inuit hunters, who usually hunt the two species 
species separately, realizing that this new species was very different from the others they had gone after. Scientists have even found skulls of the Narluga and have been studying them to try and figure out how they occur, though it should be noted that pods of the two have been known to interact with one another from time to time in the past. Number 2. Koi Wolf the koi wolf is a mixture between a coyote and a certain kind of wolves. Hybrids of any combination do tend to be larger than coyotes but smaller than wolves, and they show behaviors intermediate between coyotes and other parent species. So in other words, you're going to get a unique dog no matter what species of wolf that you deal with with the coyote and regardless of the genes that the parents provide. After it was found out that these two could breed, many would research them and even bred some of them in captivity to witness the species and their variety. Number 1. Green Sea Slug now this might actually be the only one on the list that doesn't immediately scream I'm a hybrid because when you first heard the name you probably went all right well there's a green sea slug and well the green sea slug is a sea slug that incorporates genetic material from the algae that it eats into its own DNA so that's a little different it makes itself a hybrid because of what it eats and takes in from its meal that's a very special thing and something that scientists to this day are still trying to figure out in terms of how it happens happens. Scientists call these sea slugs emerald green alicia. Their ability to turn solar energy into food is what gives them their brilliant green hue. So yes, a very special hybrid to end the list. One can only wonder if other hybrids out there are able to do a similar thing. That's all from the realm of crazy hybrids that you should have some feelings about. Would you honestly be scared of any of these hybrids if you saw them up close? And which ones did you think were honestly kind of cool? Are there any other animal hybrids that should be on my list? Be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Also check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen and I'll see you next time.